Hey, composing gloves here. And this is another video in sound design with Harmer. If you have not watched the Harmer from the ground up tutorial series, go watch that because I'm not going to talk about what buttons and knobs do. We're going to focus on concepts. So if, let's talk about that. So uh, but this is a video for pluck, a pluck bass. Here's a demo sound because you're probably like, is this even worth watching? So here is a demo sound. And a track sounds nice. Now that's an octave lower than I originally had made it. So it's quite grammy though. So here's the. And you could even imagine a pitch band, bump, 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 you know, something like that. It'd be kind of cool. But yeah, if you move around, the timbre begins to change quite radically. We're going to talk about this and a few other techniques used to do this. When I talk about plug bass, I'm not talking about like, you know, just a regular pluck. So, you know, like something where you turn the envelope on, have a really fast attack, a really low, your decays all the way down, and then your, or sustain, and then your decay and release essentially control your pluck sound. So if you turn the release down, it gets like that, long release. And then with no decay, we have a problem. So you could do that, or you could just turn the pluck on, which is essentially just a filter. So I'm not talking about those types of plucks. So I do recommend using those types of plucks. You could turn any bass sound into a pluck if you use those. So, you know, mess around with those. No, I'm talking about this. So that's a pluck. It's got a hard attack when you hit it. To me, that's a pluck. So it's plucking, sort of. Okay, so how did I make this? Well, let's talk about some ideas here. So I knew I wanted something that was kind of like, you know grimy something that i could use maybe as a filler or whatever and so what i did was i have a little bit of harmonizer going on this isn't really doing all that much mostly happening in the creative process but i'm messing with the detune so i opened up a harmer and i turned the detune and if you know what the detune does i actually turned it up so we had that and I, well i had that and i was like oh this is really great and I wanted some resonance and some things to go on. And I thought about the pluck knob instead of the resonance knob. You might be going, what the heck were you thinking? And the answer is, I don't know. Anyways, resonance. So I was thinking of that. And I thought of the pluck knob. And I said, what can I do with this pluck knob? And I know I have an articulator here. And so I went to the articulator. And I said, what if I uh, turn the envelope on, turn it on really fast, like that. And then maybe go back down. I forgot the exact shape that I did. Nope, I just went up. And I concaved it the other way. So it starts off with, with the pluck essentially off. And then it turns on. And that is what creates these pockets here. It is the pluck doing its job. So if I invert it. So that's the inverted. So as you see. Plucks off. Oh, this is pluck all the way on. My bad. So I was like, yeah, I like that. And so I turned the phaser on because I was like, dude, I got to have a phaser. And the thing that's responsible for more of these shapes is the fact that this is what introduces my resonance sort of as a combination of these two things. I turned the mix up. I left everything else alone and I went to deeper because I just was clicking buttons and wanted to see what they sound like. And that sounded pretty nice to me. At this point, I was adding distortion. This is where my harsh attack really started coming from. If I turn the distortion way up, it becomes like way too much. I do have reverb on. I just sort of just turned it on. And I do have compression on, which also helps with the attack. So when you're compressing, I'm not sure what the attack setting is on this. I'm assuming warmer has a slow attack setting. So yeah, this compressor is uh, very is a mystery. Who knows the attack and release time? But I liked what it did, so it didn't matter. So uh, that was that. That's all the settings I pretty much touched. Now it'd be kind of cool to the rolling phase from the phaser allows some interesting morphing textures as I go. And again, I create this interesting scheme here with a combination of the pluck and phaser. Though on the surface, it does not look so. And that's that. So the rubber, rubber source is also super important. If I turn it off, you get a sort of bell texture thing, which could still be kind of cool. So let's turn our rubber back on. 
and turn my octave back up. So hopefully you're beginning to see the potential with phaser and pluck going on. At this point, I've just kind of been showing you stuff. So let's talk about some ideas here. So let's make something from scratch. So let's open up this armor. I've already got something going on. So I'm going to reset it. Okay, so I want to make a bass pluck sound thing, right? I want to make something cool. So I start off with this like saw wave that's always taunting me at the beginning of my creative process. And I say, oh man, saw wave, I'm going to show you who's freaking boss. So I'm going to turn on my detune because that just seems like I want to make something sort of obnoxious. This may present tuning problems later. It, it depends. And I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Got this square feel going on. And at this point, I'm going to throw distortion on pretty early just so I get a feel for it. I'm going to use log. And yeah, that's pretty loud, so I'm going to turn it down. With distortion on, you're going to have to turn the mix down. Okay, so I'm like, that's pretty cool. I'm going to turn the pluck on this time for real. And I'm going to turn it on all the way. And that's pretty all right. Now, let's go over here. I'm going to use the resonance for real this time. Maybe not so extreme a plug. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty loud though, but I like it. I'm gonna have to take the filter down. Now we could add a phaser into there and we could change the shape. I wonder, edit articulator, phaser mix. Where's my phaser filters? Let's check out our filter options. Phaser, 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 mix, phaser, width, phaser, offset. Let's do phaser width. So we're going to automate this on slowly over time. Oh, that's kind of cool. Turn the, I, mean, I had to turn the mix way up. Uh, let's go to deep. So that's kind of interesting. Let's turn it an octave lower. And have that going on. With the phaser turn, it does some weird stuff. Let's turn it down again. Man, that's pretty trippy. So yeah, phaser is automating our resonance for us as we move it around. That'd be kind of cool. It's like a, a sound that comes in and out and it's not a band pass, which is great because band pass filters, man, they, they had their day. I like them. They're cool. Add some reverb, maybe add it. Uh, maybe not that wet. Turn the size way up. Why not? And we'll filter it a ton and we'll turn it to short K time. If I want to add more re reverb, I might use a send later to do that or just a whole separate reverb. Um, I like the short sound because this is a bass sound. So it's going to get really muddy down there already. So I got to be wise about my EQ moves early in a track. <laughs> But if I choose to now, okay, so that's one way. So we've got a pretty interesting sound at this point and we could continue on our way, but how cool would it be if we recorded this? Oh man. Yeah. Let's record that. And then let's record a few. I'm going to record on C that way. If I want to rewrite notes later, I know they're going to be written relative to C. Whoops. Uh, I suppose that low note could be interesting. And then I'm going to do something like this and maybe something like that. And then something like this. That way I have a variety to choose from. And you might be, you might be going, what the heck are you even doing right now? You're just gonna have to wait and see. I'm going to open up an Edison. We're going to use resynthesis. So, cause I want to show you how to make some cool junk. So we're going to do some play record. And 
that's it. Pretty tight stuff. All right. Open up another harmer. Not a morphine. I want a harmer. All right. There we go. Take this jazz. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I have harmers all over the map. This is getting extraordinarily confusing. Default image. There we go. So now we have this thing. Now I'm down a few, several octaves. So I'm going to just go ahead and start it from here. kind of interesting let's take the scale okay now oh you know what let's distort it again maybe a lighter distortion this time but asymmetry is always an interesting one to push That's a pretty high-end stuff right there. We might filter that out. Um, well, I would use an EQ for this personally. Let's go over here. So now we have this really like wonky sound and thing that's really aggressive so that's another way to do it you could do this you could also just start with a with the drum loop or something and just throw it in there and you know start messing with it and you can get some cool bass pluck sound so that's it for this so that's actually let's see what this same riff sounds like whoops control a control c and Piano roll, control V. Man, that's so greasy. So you could definitely use this in it. Like you could create some really interesting stuff. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments. Any ideas? Um, I'm kind of just going through and, and doing stuff. I have a whole series that explains what all these buttons and things do if you're wondering what I'm touching. So I don't want to see any comments like, what does this button do? Like, because I have a separate series for that. So uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Opposing Wolves. Reversing.